What's going on, everybody? We're back with another one. Everyone hates Tesla. The disappointing truth about Gigafactory Mexico. Let's get it. Most people are always disappointed in Tesla. There's nothing new here. Okay, shout outs to the Tesla space. And we already gave them a like. So let's hop into the video. Something has gone wrong with Tesla. What has gone wrong? Let's figure it out. New Gigafactory in Mexico. Or more specifically, we should say their plan to build a factory in Mexico. That's the problem, really. There is no Giga Mexico. Not yet, but maybe not ever. The truth is that there's a lot more to this story than just building a factory or not building a factory. Giga Mexico is the story of Tesla's past, present, and future all wrapped into one. The truth can be funny at times, but it can also just be straight up disappointing. Let's begin with the promise of Giga Mexico. This was no small thing. The factory was originally pitched as Tesla's opportunity for another giant leap forward. On Pause right there. Guys, just listen. All right, so straight out the gate, this is something that's big. It's no simple feat. So complexities are a big issue. I spent 20 years working in industrial construction, building out embassies across the planet, okay? And it's not an easy process. Things get delayed building out embassies. We think we go and go in, we make an announcement, and then three years later, we haven't even sent a team to break ground yet. And so a lot of things are at play just besides, let's get the tractors, let's get the bulldozers and start digging. That's not how it works. On March 1st, 2023, Elon Musk announced to the world that Tesla would build their next gigafactory in the Mexican state of Nuevo Leon. It would be the company's largest construction project to date, double the size of their Austin plant, and triple the vehicle output. At the time, it was said that Giga Mexico would be built in just 12 to 15 months, only slightly more time than it had taken the company to get their Shanghai China production up and running, significantly faster than Giga Berlin and even Giga Texas. Clearly, Tesla had mastered the art of the Gigafactory by now, and it would be full steam ahead from here on out. But in June 2024, almost exactly 15 months after that announcement, Musk was questioned about why there had still been little to no sign of any progress being made at Tesla's factory site in Nuevo León, and Elon replied that Giga Mexico has been put on pause. Now, let's stop. Now, also, to build out Giga Texas, it took less than two years. Of course, if you look from 12 to 16 months, that's not a big difference, especially when you're talking about constructing some of the biggest factories in the entire planet. Like <laughs> That's a big thing to do. So it's not as simple, but definitely those are still some good timelines, okay? Building out a U.S. embassy sometimes would take us five years. It could go up to seven, depending on what's going on in the ground. Many different factors, geopolitics, supplies, vendors, and then just some things on the site, right? Environmental and et cetera. This marked a pretty solid blow to many expectations about the future of Tesla that had been solidified by Elon and his crew just one year before. Mexico was pitched as the birthplace of Tesla's next generation vehicle, the much anticipated affordable compact car. And even though it was unsaid at the time, just by association that would link the company's upcoming robotaxi vehicle to the Mexico plant as well. These next generation platforms would be- Unless Tesla says that, that's not what it says. You can't just assume. Let's continue constructed on a revolutionary new unboxed manufacturing process, one that would drastically reduce the time, cost, and floor space involved in building a new car, a kind of parallel manufacturing philosophy that would mark the biggest single change to automotive production lines since the days of Henry Ford. The hype was real, but as the weeks and months rolled on, we started to get the inclination that the factory itself might be a little less than real. Is it not less than real, but delayed? And then also, guys, once you kind of dig into it, that strategy that assembly line that's going to be revolutionized it could still be applied to the factory in texas so it's not like something that can't be used because the factory in mexico is not coming online elon musk himself said that it could be utilized in texas it will be utilized is it possible that giga mexico failed because tesla chose the wrong location depends who you ask a lot of people would say that building anywhere outside of the usa was a grave mistake but there are perfectly logical reasons i don't know who says that because shanghai would be a great example of it going well, right? So whoever said that, it's just an idiot, right? So we're choosing Mexico as Tesla's next step. Money is an obvious one. It's cheaper to do anything in Mexico than it is in the US. Not only does Mexican labor tend to come at a lower cost, you can also get some pretty amazing deals on some other very important utilities, such as electricity. 
the price of energy for industrial use in Nuevo León can be as little as four cents per kilowatt hour. Average cost in the U.S. would be more like 16 cents per kilowatt hour. And in a European nation like Germany, you're looking at over 40 cents depending on the exchange rate. Speak now, I love this part because it kind of breaks down like real reasons that could just delay any project, but specifically this factory. And then later on, he kind of bakes a whole entire cake, right? Just full of facts and things like water and talks about certain different types of areas and things that could have just, you know, been an issue to Tesla when making a decision. And then at the end, he puts some great icing on the cake, which is just conspiracy theories. And so pretty much the bulk of this video makes that up, uh, you know, terrible area and where they picked out in selection. There will be a That's lot like of leveling that was required in order to level the actual property versus what you see here right here on the map. It's not the greatest, you know, kind of rendering. It doesn't show the slopes of the hill, but nothing does. And if the factory's built out, then it's leveled out. I don't. So even inside the video, it doesn't make much sense, but I'm going to allow him to continue. Let's go. We skipped forward just a bit. So keep up with us, please. Tesla has only ever released this one rendered image, but thanks to drone pilot Adrian CG, who's local to the area, we can get a little bit more perspective on the landscape. When you look at Tesla's rendering, it would appear that the factory is set on a nice flat plateau. But looking at Adrian's images, you start to realize that there is no flat land in this valley. Every no, see, because <laughs> they would create it, right? What are they going to do? Show you a rendering of the factory on a sloped hill when it's complete? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just saying that, it's kind of just funny. Like, it's always trying to insinuate doubt a little bit, but it's just kind of hilarious, right? Like, look at the one rendering. It doesn't show the slope. Now, <laughs> what? it's not supposed to. It's complete, so it's been leveled out. Everything slopes up from the roadway, so there is going to have to be a significant earth leveling project by Tesla that is going to involve cutting deep into the surface, which in this area is pretty much solid rock. The climate around Monterey is probably best described as semi-arid. It's not a dried up desert, but there is definitely no abundance of water either. The region typically gets around 30 days of rain per year. The Monterey metropolitan area gets its fresh water from the three reservoirs fed by the Rio San Juan River and rain. And so they go into the water and talk about the issues that could have come from the water. And definitely you had companies like Coca-Cola when they had a drought issue in the region. They were able to still produce and the locals were pretty upset because they had rationed water. And the companies and corporations just kept utilizing water to produce products. And that's OK. Remember, they're producing jobs. So, you know, you might be mad at the government, but that's what they need to do. Expanded in order to keep up. So there are pros and cons to any decision. And in the case of Giga Mexico, it would appear as though the positives outweigh the negatives. And Now, see, the positives were things like the governor loves you. The positive things were, you know, a lot of other companies and corporations are already there. But also Tesla has to take into account a lot of different things. It's a heavy investment, right? And that's billions upon billions of dollars in energy, time and attention. And also we have to worry about top talent. Is top talent ready to make the move down there? We're not quite sure. And does the goal and the actual perspective of the company shift? Yes. We're going to spend massive amounts of money on Cortex and GPUs and really put an auto and automobile with autonomous driving. And so we refocus our direction, but I'm going to allow him to continue. And yet there is no Giga Mexico. Elon Musk has made. Uh oh, here comes the conspiracy time. Do, 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 conspiracy time. Let's get it, man. Let's normies be normies. Conspiracy. Let's go. Some effort to offer up an explanation, saying on Tesla's June earnings call, we are currently on pause on Giga Mexico. I think we need to just see where things stand after the election. Trump has said that he will put heavy tariffs on vehicles produced in Mexico, so it doesn't make sense to invest a lot in Mexico if that is going to be the case. So we will kind of need to see how things play out politically. To me, it sounds reasonable, but I will explain after he launches his conspiracy. Now, politics is a factor for sure. But for Elon to say that Donald Trump is the primary reason for Tesla not following through with the Mexico plan feels a bit off. It's not like we didn't know full well in March 2023 that Donald Trump would be a front runner in the presidential race. And I'm not American, but I don't find it the least bit surprising that Trump would announce a policy to tax imports from Mexico. Going now, to let's go back. I think... We need to see where things stand after the election. Trump has said that he will put heavy tariffs on vehicles produced in Mexico. Where did he say this was the primary reason? Right? Am I reading that? Did Elon say it was the primary reason? No. He said, hey, guys, one of the reasons, right? He's just saying one reason. 
He didn't say this was the primary reason, right? And then fast forward into what he said that, quote unquote, quote unquote, excuse me, Trump is running, right? So we should have known that. Trump has been the president before, and those heavy tariffs were not placed on the actual cars that are already produced from Mexico. This is a new policy. And as much as Tesla is innovative, it cannot innovate political policies and understand and predict what presidential candidates are going to do. Trump has gotten even more extreme and doubled down on his tariffs coming out on Mexico and just penalties for American corporations that are not manufacturing in America, but manufacturing outside of America and bringing cars into America. That's not only for China, that will stand for American companies. And so all companies are double guessing and thinking and holding off on projects for building factories in other countries for products that they want to bring back to America to sell. Cause that's something they're going to have to think about. And it's an engineering company, not a political company. They can't foresee that that Trump would announce a policy to tax imports from Mexico. It seems like something that a forward-thinking company would be more prepared for. Not... Why would they? He was already the president, and he didn't, right? So <laughs> it's just a policy of him uh, that he's doubling down on now, and he said he's going to implement really harsh. That Tesla was ever really serious about Giga Mexico anyway. Let's be real here for a second. Now they weren't really serious about Giga Mexico. So sending people out there, doing surveys, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And this is a constant message that some people continue to perpetuate on no evidence. They're just like, oh, they weren't really serious about that. Like, bro, you know how complicated it is to build out a factory? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now we can't shift directions because if we shift directions, we were never serious in the first place. So I guess this is all propaganda. People came up on stage to manipulate. Second, if anyone at Tesla was being sincere on March 1st, 2023, when they said that Giga Mexico was coming, that it was important to the future of the company, that it would be built in as little as 12 months, then on March 2nd, 2023, Tesla crews would have started clearing and leveling the ground. They would have started building an 18 kilometer long water pipe. Things would have happened in 2023. So wait, huh? let's get that again. Let's see it. On March 1st, 2023, if they were serious, this is the only true measurement and evidence that shows that it's an entire propaganda campaign and they're nothing but liars and they were never going to do it. Only because the first day they said it, the next day they should have digged. Because they didn't dig the next following day, it's a conspiracy. It's propaganda. This is what <laughs> somebody's saying said that Giga Mexico was coming, that it was important to the future of the company, that it would be built in as little as 12 months, then on March 2nd, 2023, Tesla crews would have started clearing and leveling the ground. They would have started building an 18 kilometer long water pipe. Things would have happened. Look at on the second, they would have start clearing the ground and building a water pipe the next day. If it was that serious, what in the galaxy, bro, get this guy off my screen. That's just not how things work, guys. You can't just say you're going to do something, do a presentation, and the next day start leveling the ground. Like, what? How did the equipment even get there in the first place? It just drops out the sky, drops into the bushes, and raw land, and just starts plowing. Come on, bro. This guy's never been on a construction site on the day of his life. Again, 20 years building out embassies across the world. And that's not how it works. There's memorandums of agreements. There's processes. Even after the initial due diligence and the feasibility study, you still have a long drawn out process before you even break ground. People just have to go there to do logistics, to get the human in place, to get the workers in place, they have to buy out housing, accommodation, transportation. They have plans, security. Everything has to be layered prior to even putting the machine down. You have to establish a perimeter. You have to establish sensitive areas where you can protect the equipment that's going to stay overnight, where things are going to be stored prior to digging. Because once you dig, where's the equipment going? You just leave it there and just walk off? Like, no. So leveling comes after. A perimeter is secured after people land on the ground and start establishing 
the highway or the routes that are specifically protected to gain access to the project. Man, <laughs> normies, bro. They just be talking for ratings, man. Like, it's pretty sad, <laughs> but I get it, man. They're always second gets and, and hating Elon. It's nothing new. This video's last long enough on 15 minutes. You guys heard me talk about it back and forth. Every once in a while, I'll engage in some chit chat, but stay focused on the goal. Shout outs to Cortex, right? The massive amounts of money we actually invested. And it was funny. I need you guys to hear it because at the end, he did say, instead, they're just doing the FSD out of nowhere now. Like, out of nowhere, my guy? Here we go. Let's see. I, w I, w I want y'all guys to see it. We're just investing billions of dollars in AI out of nowhere, right? Company by making AI and robots. Then he fired everyone who disagreed with him, spent all of the Giga Mexico money on supercomputer chips, and now we're here, wherever that is. It's exactly. Yeah, you're right. Elon doesn't know what he's doing. YouTubers who never ran any type of company, especially on this magnitude, they know more than Elon. There you go. Better than all the experts. I'm out of here. Guys, I appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, support the channel. Go ahead and click on the notification bell so you guys can get more of Everyone Hates Tesla. And everybody obviously believes that they're better than Tesla and Elon at everything. And everybody at Tesla also lies, right? They really didn't mean that they were going to build a factory. They were just messing with us. I'm out of here. It's electric. Everyone hates Tesla.